Do you ever wish you could be a little fairy living wild and free in the woods, dining on morning dew and fresh flowers? Just me. I don't think it's just me. I think so many of us who grew up reading fairy tales and especially the flower fairy books have some sort of dream like this. So I decided to make my version of fairy cakes this week using different foraged things from the woods near me. Um, I'm making my batter with stinging nettle plant, which is gonna make the batter a nice green color. And then I'm going to decorate them with buttercream and edible wildflowers. And if you don't know, fairies actually really love milk and butter. There is a lot of folklore from my region that is about protecting your milk and butter from the fairies because they're very fond of stealing it and messing with it. So I thought the buttercream frosting was going to be kind of a nice nod to that sort of regional folklore. And I think these cakes are going to come out really cute and as pretty as something a fairy would eat. Before we get into baking my fairy cakes, I need to put on some protective gear and go foraging. Stingy nettle, as the name implies, are a stinging plant covered in tiny hairs that really hurt when they come into contact with the skin. I've had numerous run-ins with these since I moved to Ireland. They grow tall and abundant where I live, so in order to get in amongst the plants, I'm wearing long socks and tall belly boots to protect my legs. Rubber gloves will keep my hands and arms safe as I pick the nettles. I always try to go foraging away from farming areas that might use pesticides, and then also to wade a bit into nature away from the public footpaths as well. For this recipe, I'm only taking the top six or so leaves from each nettle plant, and I need around three cups of leaves. May is the month when everything seems to be in bloom, so I'm spoiled for choice when it comes to gathering edible flowers to decorate my cakes with. There's primroses, daisies, wild violets, forget-me-nots, dandelions, and cherry blossom all in bloom right now. often said to be a magical flower, by eating one you might temporarily gain the ability to see fairies, even through fairy enchantment. Which is always a double-edged sword, seeing fairies more often than not turns their attention to you, and thus also their mischief.
The first step for making my cakes is preparing the nettles. A quick rinse in cold water will clean them of any lingering bugs or debris, and then you can separate the leaves from the stems. Boiling the leaves for a couple of minutes will remove the stinging hairs and make it ready to blend into a puree. This is what is going to make my cake batter green. The smoother you get the puree, the more rich and green your cakes will be. One of my favorite types of fairies has to be the industrious brony. These are a small hobgoblin type of fairy that live beside us in houses and barns, kind of like a domesticated fairy. They are rarely seen, but can be heard at night moving around the house, helping with the housework, cleaning, cooking, and even mending clothes. In exchange, all brownies ask for is to never be spied upon and a bit of milk and butter. If you forget to leave their milk out or a caught spine on one, you'll get their wrath and instead of helping with the housework, they'll spend all night undoing all the chores that you've completed. There's even stories of brownies that once helped farmers till a field go and ruin that whole harvest for the season. I have yet to lure a brownie into our gatehouse, but I'll keep trying because I would love a bit of help with the housework. I'm more than happy to give them their peace and quiet, to not spy on them, and maybe a bit of milk left out too. That seems like a very fair exchange. Perhaps the sneakiest things fairies do is not when they create mischief in your house or even when they steal something outright, but when they steal the goodness or foison from food. Instead of stealing a pail of milk or a loaf of bread, fairy magic allows them to steal the essence and goodness of that bread, leaving behind only an empty shell that looks like the original food but is devoid of all sweetness and nourishment. Those who dine on the food that has the goodness stolen from it will never be able to satisfy their appetite and will wonder why they continue to waste weight even as they eat more and more. It's one of the trickiest pranks that fairies play on people because there's no way of telling which food has been messed with and which food hasn't. Hopefully my fairy cakes will not be that fade. I think these came out so charming and would be perfect for a summer picnic or just a sweet bite after any meal.